I plead the church and everybody with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brothers to open our Bibles in the Gospel of Second Luke. In the chapter 12. And we're going to read everybody together. Verse 35. Uh, Luke 12:35. Let's read. Luke 12, 35 says the following. Estejam singidos os vossos lombos e acesas as vossas candeias. Amém. Os irmãos podem estar acendidos. Let's maybe sit at the time. Let's sing another song.
Glory to God. My brothers, the church needs living, um, waiting for the comeback of Jesus. It wouldn't make sense for us to be here without us to have this in our heart. Having this, that is Jesus coming. Because Jesus is the center, he's the project. He's the project salvation of man. Uh, because uh, because the translator asked me, I'm uh, speak up a little slower. Uh, if you're bored, it's a uh, translator fault. Jesus is the center <laughs> of all the projects of God. That's why the faithful church that does not have a church. It doesn't have. It does not have a name. It is composed by faithful servants. The church waits for this prophecy to fulfill. All the other prophecies and has already fulfilled. The trumpets they're being played. The church it's waiting for the fourth trumpet. And this play. At that sound, the church will be taken. All the trumpets will be, uh, will be played, but not, not anymore with the church present. That's why she's, she prayed right there, the little kid, and the spirit. Because this is what we, we want. We have no other joy in seeing the, the signs, the judgment that are upon the people. Now we don't have any. Because we live in the world, even though um, we're trying not to be part of the world, we do live in a world where we need to have peace. We need to take care of this world. We need to take care of what God gave us. It's not like uh, we're free. So we, imagine today if it's already hard to work, breathe, and all that. Imagine in the future, everything's gonna get worse. But the word says that upon the one that's with Jesus, no condemnation will come. Nothing bad will come. This is our happiness. This is our joy. Because we are in Jesus. Because one day we chose to serve Him. And we believe in the word. And that's why we agreed and we say that there's no, there's no condemnation, nothing bad for those who are with Jesus. Being with Jesus, it is to live with Jesus, walk in the path. It is to be with Jesus. It is to have Jesus guiding your life. That's the difference. For the, uh, that's the difference of the faithful church, of the servant that is faithful. That's what Jesus wanted. That's what he wanted to express here. The text that we got here, it only talks about a uh, continuation of dialogue. If we go back on to verse uh, 13, we see that Jesus, he was always crowded by the people. And some people asked, Jesus, Master, uh, can you tell my brother to divide that inheritance with me? But Jesus says, wait, wait up. I didn't come here to, to divide anything. I'm nobody that came up to, to divide an inheritance. I'm not a judge. That's not my paper. That's not what I do. In the verse 22, that's what he says right here. Therefore, uh, he said to the disciples, first he answered that pe the person right there that was isolated with the crowd, and then G Jesus says to the, his disciples, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you, what you eat, what we will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Jesus here, at the time, he's showing 
a problem that we see today in our decade. It is a problem that is not only our problem, but that is been existing since the time of Jesus. That's the anxiety. People today, they, li they live with anxiety, anxious, worried about tomorrow. What am I going to do? Tomorrow, am I... Am I gonna have work? Am I gonna get into my work? And my name will still be there. And, uh, the board. Am I gonna be able to to pay my bills? Am I gonna be able to sustain my family? To give a creation, a better education for my children. That's the. That's something the 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 men worry about a lot. And it's taking care of their lives. And if we look at the rational way, that is good. Because you to make a plan, it is really good. The person, when uh, he, he plans, he will never take... Um, you never take it as a surprise and you to make a plan for you to see your savings you you make math before you spend a little too much it's right there's no problem but inside of what is the word of the Lord the man cannot take those things be the priority in his life because when this becomes the priority in his life when the man starts to live with uh cautious and uh, with anxiety of what's going to happen tomorrow, he starts now to to save things for this life. And Jesus here now, he makes a comparison. He starts to compare comparison of those who are making a plan for eternity and those who are making a plan for this life. And he says, you should not save your money where when where everything comes, everything destroys. No, don't do that. You need to be paying attention of what is from the Father. Of what is eternity? The things from this life will go by. Don't be anxious. Seek first the Lord, and the other things will be added. The servant from the Lord, he lives by faith. The servant of the Lord, he lives by the miracle. The servant of the Lord, he lives away for the acting of the Lord. Oh, I'm gonna now. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not just gonna, you know, wait. Uh, wake up at 12 or 1 p.m. and wait for the miracle. Uh, the miracle came and already went to someone else. But there's people here that like to wake up. Like at 12, 1 p.m., have mercy, you know, uh, don't don't even open the door, but sometimes the door opened and it closed, they didn't even see, This there's nothing to do with faith, this is being too, you know, but there's some sisters that here that they like, you know, there's some sisters here that, they, you know, that, oh my god, only Jesus, that's not our paper now, you know, but it is biblical. You know, it's better not, not even to say because, you know, we'll get in trouble. I'm not even going to finish the service. But it is interesting that the Jesus here, he cuts down that uh, conversation. And he gets in of you know, what is the revelation of the Lord? What's the word of the Lord? What's the teaching of why he came here? Jesus here, he shows his disciples. Now he says... Be there. Be there with your with your candles. Light up. Oh yeah, light up with your uh, waist grilled and your lamps burning. So when the people was to leave Egypt, Egypt, when they were leaving, the Lord was already answering uh, all the the prayers of the people. The Lord now He starts to prepare Israel for the biggest deliverance ever seen by the people of God. Israel was 400 years captive living inside of a nation of Egypt. 
what only started as a small family, a small group. Now it became millions of people. Uh, 400 years, almost the age of Brazil. Imagine. And these people now they were suffering. They were living in favor of uh, Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was there, you know. Millions of slaves working to come to build, to grow. And the people now they start praying the Lord. And the, the Lord uh, prepared Moses, prepared the people to leave. And at the last night there, the Lord gives the orientation to Moses and says, Moses, you're going to tell my people to gather together uh, between the families, get the lamp, a couple days living with the lamp, and in that specific day, that lamp need, need, uh, had to be sacrificed and his blood needed to be put it up on the at the door posts of the door and um, the rest you got the meat you have to prepare the meat in such a way this this and that and the Lord gave all the instructions to the people and that day you need to talk to people and when they're sitting down at the table they have to be with their waist grown with their grow the, the, the shoes and the foot and you eat quickly because that's the Passover of the Lord my brothers the Lord he pretty much repeats the revelation from the Lord but why is that? because there's no other time there's no more time to anything we live now in the clock of God and, and Revelation says that we leave the time of soon the time of soon is Jesus comes Maranatha oh come Lord Jesus this is the time that we live in the time where everything goes by where tomorrow already passed today and tomorrow is the future so we only have the future there is nothing else that we can do with the past but we can do a lot with the future that's why at this time here the Lord will uh, give guidance to the, the disciples and says oh you need to uh, let your words be grown truly but why is that because the truth is the Lord the, the, Lord, the Lord says I'm the path the way in life Nobody comes to the Father besides me, besides from me. So the Lord, when the so when man it is in Jesus, so when he have his waist grow in Jesus, it is because he's leaving the world. He's leaving the word, the word from Jesus. He's ignoring everything from the world. He doesn't trust the world, but he trusts especially in Jesus. He lives and he waits for the movement of the waters where the Lord he sends the angel so he sends his angels to act in justice for his people for his servants Israel couldn't lo lose time the worker when he came to his house the, the father of the family he could not at that night he couldn't rest he couldn't rest in the meaning of what Oh, can you imagine? You work all day long in construction. It's, uh, some, it's, a, it's a thing that we know really good. So all day carrying weight, that hate, and that suffering, uh, you know, getting hurt and working and working and working, then you get home. And you cannot even take your clothes from work. You cannot take your shoes from work. You cannot even see the couch. Watch some TV. And you know, rest a little. Before you go do something. The orientation of the Lord says, The people tonight at this day, they cannot do that. Why not? Because the time that we live, it is prophet. It's prophetic. The men 
he cannot be involved with those things. The man cannot be building anything for this life. That's why the Lord says, don't let my people be accommodated. It is time for them to sit down at the table the way that they are. Because the angel will pass by. And this is our Passover. And the Passover means past, the path. My brothers, we live this. The waist road, the um, shoes in the foot. But why? Because everything here is prophetic. The way is to be grown. Why? Because the church, that is the body of Christ, it needs to be straight. It cannot be with no tendency of going forward or back one side or the other. But the body of church needs to be connected to Jesus. Connected to the Father. And the Lord said, the church us. The Church of Christ, we were not called to be tail, we were called to be head. That's why here in another aspect, our vision, our position needs to be a position of victory, it needs to be a position of victorious. Why? Because Jesus, he died on the cross for us. So our biggest enemy, that is the uh, eternal death, was, was defeated by Jesus. So there is no condemnation and that's uh, why, because we are more than victorious in our position, it is a position of gratitude to the Lord. It is our heads up, the body up, looking up, looking to up, because it is from up, it is from the heaven that comes our help. The church from the Lord now cannot be involved with the things from the world, with the men. You know why? Because if this happens, the failure will come. The defeat will come, the sadness will come, the disappointment. That's why at this last time the church from the Lord needs to be with the with the ways grown. Our position as a church it needs to be this. It is to look to the Lord. It needs to be full with the truth because the servant needs to be walking with the truth. It needs to be a commitment with the truth. He needs to preach the truth. He needs to give testimony of the truth. He cannot only walk giving bad testimony, saying this and saying that. Jesus, come. You need to prepare because the message from your church is this. And the best message preached is the, is the message of time and life. And at this last time, the church from the Lord it needs to not only speak from the Lord, but it needs to leave Jesus. And if Jesus is especially this, it is to have your heads up, your body up, straight up. Why? Because when we look to the Lord, when more we look to the Lord, when more we know about the Lord, more we want to seek Him and see Him. And our candles need to be burning. And it's talking about the Holy Spirit. With the staff in hand for the salvation and all the armor from God, my brother. Finishing it up over here that this message it is a, a message that is really specific to the church. And tonight, the Lord calls us so we can take this position, a direction for our lives. A positioning for life. Different for sure. It is those who are over there accommodated, living a life of defeat, living a life that's waiting for the luck, the good, and for tomorrow. But tonight the Lord is inviting you. Tonight the Lord is inviting you so you can meet Him and see Him and see who is Jesus. So you can truly see and open your heart and say, Maranatha, Jesus come. I need to be ready for this day because the text here continues. Many other, many other things, we're not going to get into it. But it is important that verse 19 says, No, for this, that the time that the that the time, if he knew that uh, the rubber, that the time was going to come, he would be watching. 
so we know that when the thief comes to steal our house the, the house father he needs to be paying attention sometimes nights without sleep sometimes nights with our prayers with our knees in the floor praying for the family praying for the, praying for the salvation of family members praying for the salvation of their kids many times the parents and the Lord they live like this watching because they don't know what time the thief is going to come they don't know the day that Jesus is going to come back to, to get the church but there's a lot of fathers that are spending nights awakening without any rest but uh, none of the way uh, worried about the kids many times they don't know how the kids are not knowing what they're doing or where they're where they are who they're with what they're doing the same way that there are people in the world just like that families like this losing it destroying itself but the church of God it lives awakened paying attention because the moment that we live it is the moment for this it is for the moment for us to be awake and prepared because whenever Jesus comes back and he comes to take one specific or the whole church we will be raptured we will be taken not only we're not we're not gonna be here in this world suffering anymore but we will be forever in the, in the arms of our Savior that's why I'm about this, this message tonight but especially just uh, so you can, so it's just a warning so everybody can be watching for those who are living their um, for those who are living their lives in the wrong way so if you haven't had an experience with the Lord yet you can tonight actually take a position and take a position with the Lord not worry about anymore don't worry about this life and worry about the new life, the eternity the life that the Lord has for you and the invitation from Jesus is this come and live the eternity with me come live the salvation live this project open your heart so open your heart so you can be inside so you can be in the church that will be raptured so may the, the Lord bless us so you're going to glorify the Lord at this time when you're going to be singing. And you're going to say, Oh Lord, confirm my choice. Oh Lord, confirm with me tonight my call from being the servant of the Lord. From being a chosen one, from being a loved one.
A hora em que vivemos, Sound that we live in, it is the time of the rapture. The city in which ready prepared. The wife that is the church is ready. The wife that is the church is prepared. It's ready for the for the screen that says the husband comes. That's why tonight this message. The play of the trumpet, it is for this. It is, oh Lord, come Jesus. We need to be ready. Because, because the Lord is coming. And our life, it is to be in eternity with the Lord.
Hallelujah. Let's have a word of adoration to the Lord. Oh Lord, we glorify your name. We thank you, God, because we seek to be in this Jerusalem. Your people seek, O oh Lord, to live with you in eternity. We know that you are getting everything ready in your church, O oh Lord. Every day it's been shown, it's been praising your name. And we want to thank you, we want to thank you. And because we know, Lord, that we don't deserve this love. But you love us in such a way. You loved us first. You brought us to your presence. You have every day uh, a stuck on our feet in this rock. You've seen us see. You only look up. Because that's where it will come all the, the blessings, all the help. And we thank you for tonight because we know that your holy name and your Holy Spirit has been walked among us. And we thank you because we know that your Holy Spirit has been talking to our hearts. Your word is, has fulfilled our hearts. And we know that we can trust you, O Lord. We can adore you because you were the one that are provided. You are not allowed to go wrong with your people. We know, Lord, that you always, always will come. Even though knowing that we are not perfect, but you love us with your great love. Your church seeks to be with you in eternity and glory because celestial mentions, mentions has been prepared for your people. Your people is the church of the last time. It is the church that prayed for me. It is the church of Lord that has, it has been faithful. And we ask, O oh Lord, that we could be faithful until you come, O oh Lord. We know that it's soon. We know that it's really soon. Glorify be your holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. O oh Lord, at this time, we want to thank you for this feast, a spiritual feast. Because your presence was felt in this place. The walking of the angels, your voice that is delicate and smooth, talking and speaking to our hearts. Listen to the prayers of your church, the gratitude that we have, and we are part of this people that is chosen to be with the Lord in heaven. Take us in peace that we can have a week of victory in your presence. It's a prayer we do. In the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that the holy grace of our God, Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet eternal consolations and operations of the Holy Spirit could be poured upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brothers may be seated. This is the end of the service. If anybody needs a prayer, we are here at your disposal. The church is going to stay in the spirit of prayer. The, the group is going to be praying, uh, singing, just a little. And if you need a prayer, just raise your hand or tell the person next to you to raise. And we'll go and we'll help you out. Amen. Praise the Lord to everyone. tell everybody that I, we know that it's tight but this is going to be over not this year but in the beginning of next year we're going to be we already starting the rebuilding of the new church already this year and the next year we're already going to have a new church 